Hello, chemistry students. Today we're going to take a look at our unit project. And in our unit project, we're going to come to understand what qualitative analysis means. Uh, qualitative analysis is a part of the unit uh, objectives. And in that, we learned uh, what matter is, and atoms, and molecules, and ions, and isotopes, and chemical reactions, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, today we'll look at some practical chemical reactions. And we use um, something called the qualitative uh, result to learn about some chemistry. So your projects are worth about 5%. I'd ask you to submit some on your day of your test, but uh, again, that's all pretty flexible stuff. So if you need some time, just let me know. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to investigate some acids or bases with a uh, red cabbage juice indicator. So an indicator is a chemical that reacts with an acid or a base, and by reacting, changes color. And indicators can be expensive, professionally made mixtures, or some simple homemade concoctions. In this investigation, we will use an indicator made from a red cabbage. So by placing one or two chopped up red cabbage leaves in boiling water, we will create a solution from the cells of the leaf. And by boiling the water, we actually break the cell walls down and cell membranes down and pull out of the leaf's uh, cells uh, chemicals that react with acids or bases. So that solution will react with acids and become pink. And that same solution will react with bases and become green. And here is sort of a scale of what that indicator will look like. If it, it starts off as sort of a purpley mixture, when we take the red cabbage leaf, boil it, uh, we make a purpley solution. The, if we mix it with an acid, it becomes more pinkish. If we mix it with a base, it becomes more green. And there you can see the numbers of the pH scale on the bottom, 0, 7, and 14. Now, in reality, chemical wastes, swimming pools, medicines, and numerous other solutions need to be tested for acidity or basicity on a daily basis. Electronic probes and chemical indicators are common tools for these problems. And so for our purposes, we will test safe, household, uh, non-cleaning chemicals for acidity or basicity. So we're definitely not going to use anything dangerous. Uh, we should not be using any cleaning compounds. Some of those can be exceptionally dangerous, like Drano. Um, but for the purposes of this project, we're going to use a lab report. We're going to use sort of the template of a lab report. And I'd ask you to submit either this template or write a formal copy using this as your guide, as your rough notes. So what is your uh, lab report going to look like? Uh, well, first thing you need to do, it doesn't necessarily need to be the first thing that you do, but the first thing I'm going to want to see or you're going to want to present, of course, is a title. Your title should be descriptive, it should be unique, and it should be as long as a sentence, or even longer than a sentence. If we go back to the top, this is my title here. It's long, it's my own, it looks like a sentence. Um, I think it could be even better. I didn't want to take all the good things you could talk about in your title, but the longer that title is, the better. Your title should certainly not be project acid base lab, pH lab, anything short. If it's shorter than one or if it's about two, three words, it's way too short. To show you what a good title looks like, I'm going to show you one of my most favorite websites. Uh, this is called New Scientist. Uh, New Scientist. New Scientist is a fantastic uh, magazine. It comes out quite often. Uh, it is uh, written for everyday people, not necessarily scientists, about common current science. Um, now some titles. There is a very good title. MRSA Superbugs, Resistance to Antibiotics is Broken. Here's another one. Look how long these titles are. These titles are not short. They are not one or two words. They do not say a news article. They do not say article for new scientist. They are long descriptive titles. Notice the capitalization. They're capital, capitalized just like a sentence is capitalized. They're not all capitals. They're not all bold. They're not all um, caps lock kind of stuff. Those are what good titles look like. If you look at um, newspapers, sometimes they're not the best kinds of titles. But for a project, the longer and more descriptive the title you can make, the better off your title is going to be. Next, you're going to create an introduction. Uh, this I would leave to you. Your introduction uh, should be a paragraph or more. It should explain what acids and bases are. It should explain what indicators are. And you should give a real life application for these ideas. Maybe a real life indication of where somebody uses an indicator. That makes a good introduction. Now, the next part of your project will have these he headings purpose, 
you can copy this purpose that's here. Just use this purpose that's here. Our purpose is to use a chemical indicator to determine if household chemicals are an acid or a base. The next thing you're going to put down is your hypothesis. You could, like I said, use this as a template. You could just copy this. You don't have to write this all yourself. But a hypothesis is a fundamental part of the scientific process. A hypothesis is a testable question. Okay, they're not just random questions that don't really have an answer or can't be answered. They must be testable, and that's really what this is. Uh, so if a solution of indicator in household chemical turns pink, then the household chemical is an acid. Okay, so we're going to do this if part, and this is what we expect. Then the household chemical is an acid. Next we have if a solution of an indicator and household chemical stays purple, then the household chemical is neutral. And if a solution of an indicator and household chemical turns green, then the household chemical is a base, just like we saw in the indicator uh, or the scale for the indicator up above. Uh, next, these are the materials. If you want to do this lab, and you certainly can, it's pretty easy to do, pretty safe to do, you need to gather, gather all these materials. Uh, a red cabbage, or make the red cabbage use indicator, I'll show you how to make that. You need some plastic cups, you need a marker maybe, maybe some tape, some spoons maybe, some household chemicals to test. For example, you could use water, you could use baking soda, and water, vinegar, salt, sugar, lemon juice, clear soda pops, but any other safe chemical, safe chemical, okay, no Dranos, no bleach, nothing dangerous. If you wouldn't put it on your hands, you shouldn't be putting bleach or Drano on your hands, don't use it. Uh, no one needs to get hurt here. Really, the results are not going to be that incredible. Uh, the indicator is not an absolutely perfect indicator. It won't react with everything to tell us good results. Um, so please, please be safe. There's no reason to get hurt doing any of this. Uh, next, methods. So you should include it this method section. And if you want to make the red cabbage juice indicator, what you do is you boil one or two chopped up red cabbage leaves. Really what I do is I just rip them up. I don't even bother to cut them. I just rip them up, put them in the water, and poke it with a fork a lot of times. You don't even really need to poke it. You just need to boil it. Uh, so by boiling half or one to two chopped up red cabbage leaves in enough water that covers the cabbage, and you boil for about five to ten minutes. Uh, the solution really becomes a real dark purple. Allow it to cool. Again, don't burn yourself. Don't do anything foolish. There's no rush. There's no need to get hurt doing any of this kind of stuff. So it cools down. And then you just sort of uh, strain out the uh, red cabbage leaves and you keep the purple solution behind. The next thing we're going to need is a data table like the one below. You could use this data table here. I try to leave as much space as possible to put in any of the chemicals that you might want to test. Next thing I'd ask you to do is to make a guess about each chemical's acidity or basicity. Okay, so just, I don't know, use your best best guess. Don't worry about it. It's just a guess. Uh, if you want, you can choose to briefly research each of those chemicals before guessing. But again, don't just look up the information about uh, whether it's an acid or a base. Just give yourself a guess. See if you can identify an acid or base maybe from the chemical's name um, or anything other like that. Uh, label your plastic cups so you remember which chemical is in each cup. Pour each chemical into its own cup. You don't need like a quarter of like a real cup. You just need a little bit in the bottom of the cup. Uh, slowly add a, a splash of red cabbage juice indicator to each cup. So it doesn't have to be, maybe it could be a little bit more measured, and that might be something you think about. But you just add a dash of the red cabbage juice. You don't want to just totally swamp your, your chemical and red cabbage juice because you won't see the color change. Uh, but just add a little bit, and then if it's not enough color change to see, you just add a little bit more. You want to record your observations in your data table for every chemical that you test. Okay, those, those are the methods. Now, I'll go through in this video what the results look like if you don't want to do it, but it's a pretty neat uh, investigation. It's pretty neat if you've got kids uh, or maybe cousins that you're looking after or your own kids. Uh, they might really enjoy some of the, the, the magic, the color change. But again, be safe. Don't get anybody hurt. The next part of your lab report would be analysis. And your analysis should be a descriptive paragraph about your data. Up here should just be your data. You shouldn't be telling me that the color indicator is green, so it's a base. All that your met, all that your data table is is just the data, just simply the data, what you see. But in your 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 analysis, it's a description about your data. Okay, so this is where you tell me because it's green, it's a base, and because it's pink, that chemical is an acid. So you should describe each chemical as an acid or as a base or unknown, and you should use your data to, to answer that question. You can say, like, because the color is this, it's this, and because the color is this, it's this, and because the color was that strange, weird color that I've never seen before, I have no idea if the indicator just doesn't work. That's totally valid. So in a second paragraph, explain if the lab results address the purpose 
Okay, do the lab results address the purpose? And the purpose is, was given. We're just testing if a household chemical is an acid or a base. And then include a way that the lab could be improved. And there are lots of ways that we can improve this lab. It's reasonably crude, but it's just about colors. It's just about qualitative indicators. It's not necessarily the most refined kind of investigation, but it uh, could be improved. Lots of ways to improve it. If you're looking for some ideas, uh, just let me know. I can give you some hints. Uh, the next thing I'd ask you to do in your lab report is include a discussion. And a discussion is where you're going to show me that you've understood chemistry. I'd ask you to answer these questions in complete sentences, uh, paragraphs if you need to. If you're going to borrow information from somewhere, give some references, uh, show your stuff. Next thing is conclusion. And your conclusion would be a well-written paragraph. It doesn't need to be long. It can be brief. That describes the use of indicators. I'd ask you to describe what indicators are and why they are important in real life applications. Include some sort of question you have about this topic that you would research or investigate next. So those, they usually call those next steps. So you want to include a question that you have uh, about the next steps that you would have if you were really, really into this stuff. So next what I'm going to do is uh, show you what some of these results look like. So if you want to try this yourself and enjoy the mysteries of chemistry, uh, which are maybe no longer mysteries to you, you could certainly just turn off the video right now, or if you want to just sort of take a look at what some of these results are, just simply to interpret them. I'm just going to show you the pictures of what the results are. I'll go through that next. So now I'm going to run through some of the data for that investigation. If, uh, again, you want to enjoy this yourself, just stop the video and make the materials and you can enjoy it yourself. But here is what the red cabbage juice indicator solution looks like. Uh, it's a dark purplish color. The, the angle of the camera coming down uh, from above gives it a real dark color. You might see a more better color here as the light comes in from the side. Now, what I'm going to run through next are the pictures of the solutions that I chose and what they look like before. So you could use these to fill in your data table for the before indicator uh, kind of thing. Here is uh, aqueous sodium chloride. There's the chemical formula, NaCl, Aq, and it's very uh, clear, totally transparent, but that's just uh, ocean water, really. It's, it's uh, sodium chloride in water. Uh, just to give you a bit of a reminder about what that's all about, here is solid sodium chloride, table salt, NaClS. It looks like that. They're stuck together. When we put it into water, we get separate sodium and chloride ions. They separate from each other. And that's what NaClAQ is. It's liquid with some salt in it. And the ionic compounds dissolve in the water. For the next solution that I chose was vinegar. Uh, you can I, It's really difficult to see, but there is some vinegar in the bottom of that cup there. So vinegar, again, very transparent stuff. Next we have some aqueous sodium bicarbonate. Uh, sodium bicarbonate is the uh, chemical name for baking soda. If you're wondering what the chemical formula is, you can look in your table of common ions and you'll see sodium, Na, and you'll see bicarbonate, HCO3, with a charge of 1 minus. Now here is baking powder in water. Baking soda and baking powder, they sound the same, they're a little bit different. Here is isopropyl alcohol solution. So this is like the rubbing alcohol that somebody might have used to clean out their cuts at one point in time. We really probably don't recommend that anymore, but that's the kind of stuff this is. Maybe you use it to clean off some jewelry or um, sterilize something if you're sterilizing something at home. Next we have bath salts in water. Bath salts uh, are really magnesium sulfate, MgSO4. They're aqueous in this case. I just dissolved some in the water and they look clear like bath water. Next, we have sucrose. Sucrose is table sugar, sweet, sweet table sugar, dissolved in some water, some aqueous sucrose, and it just looks like a watery, sugary solution. Next, I have Tums, uh, the commercial, like the antacid Tums. You could look up Tums and what they're made up of um, to figure out what kind of chemical it is, but that's Tums in water. Maybe you ask yourself, what are Tums for? Why do I eat Tums? What do they help me feel better about? So next I'm going to run through the data of what this looks like when mixed with the chemical indicator. So these are the observations after the indicator is added. Here you'll see uh, the indicator and I used maybe, this is maybe about an ounce, maybe I'm using about half an ounce of indicator and I don't mean to use the imperial kind of stuff, I'm just not certain what how much I used. So there's aqueous sodium chloride in that cup, the same cup that I showed you the picture of and then I've added that indicator and it 
sort of looks that color. So you can maybe ask yourself, is it, what, what is that? Is it neutral? Is it acid? Is it base? And again, you're really just going to record the color in your data table and then make that judgment about acid, neutral, or base, or unknown later in your analysis section. Uh, next, vinegar and the indicator. There's the indicator, added it to vinegar, and quite the nice shocking color change. Next, we have aqueous sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, plus the indicator. So here's the indicator on the left, threw it into the cup with the baking soda and water, and we get that color. Pretty neat color. Quite shocking difference between the vinegar baking sodium bicarbonate, baking soda. Next we have baking powder. Baking powder, quite a different chemical. You can tell, right? Different chemical, different color. So there's the indicator, added it to the baking powder in the water, and we get that. Next one, isopropyl alcohol. We will see the structure of isopropyl alcohol in unit two, uh, but for now, what we've done is the added the indicator, we get that. Maybe ask yourself, what is that? Uh, here, bath salts in water. There's the magnesium sulfate plus the indicator in water. Hmm. Here's the color of it. What do you think? Next one. Sucrose or table sugar. So there's the indicator. There's the table sugar. Uh, and there, I've added the indicator to the table sugar solution. And there's the color. And the final one that I've done is Tums. Weird. Not quite like this, right? Look at the look at the transparency. Mm, very cloudy. Um, so what do you think? There's the indicator again, and I don't know if you can sort of see the color shine through it. Very transparent with the tums. Is that neutral? Is acid is a base? Does it does it work? Who knows? Uh, so that's what the lab is sort of all about. You're going to use a qualitative indicator, the color, to make some sort of judgment about the chemical whether acid, neutral, base, unknown. And again, it's a very simple indicator that you make quite cheaply at home. It's a little homemade concoction, uh, but it helps you test whether something is an acid or a base. If you're really into gardening and you need to test whether your soil is an acid or a base, here in Hamilton it's very likely to be a base, but uh, depending if you live in an older, maybe, neighborhood, your soil might be more acidic or basic. And you can use this kind of stuff to test at home if your soil is acidic or basic, which is helpful for growing certain types of plants and deciding which plants would be best for your garden. So as always, if you ever have any questions, please ask me, please let me know. That's just a brief rundown of what our project would look like. I have some exemplars of the lab reports in the classroom. You could type this and make it look super nice yourself, or you could follow the template that really doesn't make any difference for me. Uh, I'm more into this for the chemistry. Hopefully you're into this for the chemistry too. Again, it's not an arts class, it's not visual arts, you don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. Uh, as always, have fun, good luck everybody. If you need some help, always email me, come see me.